This video is brought to you by Honey, the free browser extension that saves you money when shopping online on sites like Razer, eBay, Amazon, and many, many more. Check out the first link in the video description to begin saving money online now. Hello everyone, I'm Em. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Razer Mamba Hyperflux mouse paired with the Razer Firefly Hyperflux mouse mat. Uh, it's a whole combo that you have to buy. It's uh, by far my favorite Razer mouse that I've ever used, mainly for the technology that's in there and uh, it's just a convenient mouse, I suppose, especially if you like wireless mice. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a nice all-round experience in my opinion. But uh, I'm gonna go over all the Razer mice I've had in my time and how we've gotten here, I guess. So in 2012, I had the Razer Naga Epic wireless mouse. Then in 2015, I upgraded to the Razer Mamba wireless mouse, the one with the dock and stuff. I think that one died a year later, so I had to RMA it. They sent me a new one. The new one also died, so I'm like, screw the Razer Mamba, give me a Lancet. So uh, Razer sent me a Lancet over, thanks Razer. And then uh, that one I gave to my mum. That mouse is still functioning absolutely fine. But uh, for myself, I think back in March, I guess, of, of last year, I bought myself the Razer Mamba Hyperflux mouse. As uh, I really did like my experience using the Razer Mamba mice in the past, as I, I think I used it for like, you know, two, three years at least, uh, but they kept on dying on me. So that was kind of annoying. This one, luckily, uh, it's been almost a year, no, like no real signs of anything going wrong. Uh, then again, there was no real signs of anything going wrong with the other ones. They just kind of died overnight mysteriously. But uh, this one, you know, it's been a good experience so far. Nothing's really bad about the mouse. Uh, it's got pretty cool technology that we'll get to in a second. And um, yeah, it's just been a great experience. I think the price of the mouse has dropped over time as well since being released in, uh, I think, March of 2018 after CES when it was unveiled in January of 2018, I think and then it was released back in March, I think. Right, so enough about like the backstory and stuff of how we got to this mouse. Let's actually go and take a look at it. We'll go over the software, uh, whether you should buy one. I think you should. It is very expensive, as I think Razer's, by far Razer's most expensive mouse you can buy on Amazon. They're currently around 200 pound, $200. Uh, but I think when they launched, they were 250. So they've dropped in price ever so slightly, but still for a mouse and mouse mat combo, you're paying a lot really. Uh, you could get, you know, like a pretty decent little graphics card upgrade for yourself instead of buying this mouse. But uh, if you already have a, like a good PC, I guess, and you don't really want to upgrade it, and you happen to have like 200 pound laying around for a mouse, uh, I think this is a really good option. There's pretty much no latency. I've played Battlefield, I've played CSGO with this mouse. There's never, ever any latency. You don't, you don't feel like it's a wireless mouse, you know, you, you feel like you're in wide mode, I guess. There ain't no lag, there ain't no like, um, you know, interference with the mouse, nothing like that. Like for like the year I've had it, I don't think I've ever experienced any kind of lag interference, anything from, you know, other devices, you know, nothing, nothing interferes with it. It's just, it just works. You plug it in, it works fine. And if you're someone that travels, you can also use the mouse in wired mode, uh, just plug it out of the mouse mat and plug the cable that you plug into the mouse mat into your mouse instead. And uh, there you go, it's wired mode. Uh, however, if you unplug it and you don't have the mouse mat laying around, your mouse will die within like 10 seconds because that mouse has no battery inside, okay? That's kind of the drawback, I suppose. There's no battery inside, but it's also a good thing as because there's no battery, the mouse is very light. And for people that like playing games like, you know, CSGO, Battlefield 5, uh, it's kind of nice to use a mouse that doesn't weigh a whole lot. Now the way to actually achieve the whole wireless technology thing and make it all work, I guess, is by keeping the mouse on the mouse mat at all times. That is the way the mouse receives power when in wireless mode. The entire surface of the mouse mat is covered in like a wireless charging pad basically for the mouse. There's just like a couple of coils, I guess, everywhere that give the mouse power. Now the mouse has no battery inside, you know, the only way for it to keep a charge is through, I think, a little capacitor inside there. And uh, I think that keeps a charge for probably around 10 to 15 seconds, depending, I think, on, uh, of course, the LED effects that are currently enabled. If you have all the brightness turned off and stuff and no LEDs enabled, you could probably get away with picking up the mouse for maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, something along those lines before it, you know, loses power altogether. But if you keep the mouse on the mouse mat, uh, there's, you know, it, it just stays charged, it's good, it's just a really nice experience in general. And also, if you're into cable management, uh, this mouse is pretty good too, you know? No wires. There's one less wire that you have to worry about, and uh, you don't have to worry about a charging cable for the mouse. The only cable you have to worry about is the one that goes into the mouse mat that powers the LEDs beneath the mouse mat, 
and powers the actual mouse itself sitting on top of it. Now this mouse mat is very very similar to the mouse mats that I'm sure all of you are familiar with, the Razer Fireflies, the normal versions. They have the cloth edition and the hard edition mouse mats and uh, I think both of them cost around £50 on Amazon, I guess. But this mouse mat, even though it is still a Firefly mouse mat, uh, it doesn't have a Razer logo in the corner here, like the regular Firefly mouse mats would usually have. But instead, the mouse mat just has a, an LED here, an RGB one. You can change this to, you know, whatever color you want, but it cannot sync up with any lighting effects, like, you know, wave or anything. It's just like a single color that you set it to, and that's it. But that's that LED there. And then there's also another LED uh, at the bottom of the mouse here, indicating that, you know, it's powered. So if you want to go ahead and turn off the Razer logo LED and the scroll wheel LED on the mouse uh, but keep this one on you have that option and if we go ahead and actually you know remove the mouse from the mouse mat you'll see in a few moments that the LEDs on the mouse will turn off because the mouse is not receiving power and there you go the white LEDs turned off it's like help I need power dude I'm gonna die and uh, after like a few seconds there we go the mouse has died, it's no longer working, but that LED stays on. However, you know, nothing going on here, the mouse has lost all battery power. But if we pop it back on the mouse mat, bada bing, bada boom, within like one or two seconds, it's back online, it's, you know, it's working like normal. There are some problems though, uh, because the main charging surface and the main like charging strength of this mouse mat is in the center. If you go ahead and move the mouse, uh, I guess like on the edge of the mouse mat here, it can't really receive power. But if you go ahead and move it closer towards the center, let's say this much, uh, the mouse gets power. So what's happened to me a few times is that while I'm using the mouse, uh, I end up sometimes being you know, a little bit over the edge and the mouse stops receiving power and then dies on me and I'm like, whoops. But all you have to do then is just, you know, move it back to the center. It receives power again. It's back online within like a second and uh, you know, no real problem there but uh, just something to keep in mind uh, that the main charging power I guess and the main charging strength is in the center not on the edges because the mouse can't really be charged if the mouse is you know partially off of the mouse mat so something to keep in mind also the LEDs beneath here are pretty much the exact same as you'd find on the Firefly but I'm pretty sure it's the exact amount of LEDs on the mouse mat, you know, at the bottom here for that underglow and, you know, your crazy RGB lighting effects. It does support wave, it supports everything you'd expect it to support. Uh, it's just a regular Firefly mouse mat, pretty much. Now, one thing that I want to show you about this mouse mat is that it is dual services, dude. You can pick it up, flip it over, and boom, you got a cloth surface now. And if you don't want a cloth surface, just pick it up. Flip it over, dude, and now you've got, you know, your plastic hard surface, the speed surface, I guess. So that there is like a pretty nice feature, uh, not something you'd find on the regular Firefly mouse mat, that's for sure. So uh, if you'd want, you know, a different surface on, on the Firefly on the Firefly mouse mat, you'd have to get a, an entirely new mouse mat. But with this one, just flip it over, dude. But uh, as for the actual like LEDs beneath here, I think one of mine are slightly defective, and I think it's this one here. Uh, you probably won't even ever notice this, uh, especially like on camera, but in person. Now and again, one of the LEDs kind of go out of sync and change to a color they're not meant to change to. And I'm not entirely sure if this is like a software related bug or like hardware, as the LED still works fine, it's just every now and again, it's slightly out of sync. So, just something to keep in mind about the LEDs on here. They're pretty good except for one, sometimes being out of sync, depending on what color it's on. But as for the actual tech specs of this mouse, in case anyone cares, uh, 16,000 DPI, optical sensor, uh, raises like 5G optical sensor, and uh, very accurate. The latency, as I mentioned earlier, there's no freaking latency. Uh, it's just, it's just beautiful. And of all of the mice out there right now, uh, I don't think Razer could release anything at the moment that would make me switch from this guy, uh, mainly because I, it's just so convenient to have a wireless mouse that you never have to plug in and charge overnight. Also, I just got an email from freaking Volkswagen there. Uh, I was meant to post my car reveal video today, but instead of getting a mouse and mouse mat review. Uh, the car video will be released probably in the next week. The weather at the moment is so, so bad. It is raining for the next couple days. It's cold outside. So I'm going to wait until the weather kind of improves a little bit and uh, then I'll go ahead and release the full car reveal video. But anyway, back to the whole mouse and mouse mat review, I guess. Let's take a look at the software. Let's take a look at the lighting effects, as you know, RGB is very important nowadays. All right, so this is Razer Synapse 3. Uh, all you gotta do is you gotta press on Razer Mamba Hyperflux. You're gonna press on that guy. You got all your settings here. There is a hyper shift 
uh, switch on the mouse as well that you can enable. Uh, so you can just map one of these keys to the hyper shift key by where, where is this thing? There we go, razor hyper shift. So you can go ahead and map the, uh, let's say the DPI up button. And when you go ahead and press that button, you can remap like all of the buttons on the mouse to do like, you know, something else. But that is a feature that I never use and probably never will. But for some of you out there, that might be something that's actually pretty cool and useful. But for me, that's just not the case, unfortunately. Uh, but that's kind of like all the buttons on the mouse. You know, you got forward, back, you have your left and right click, you have your scroll wheel. The scroll wheel on this mouse is beautiful to use. Very, very comfortable, you know, it makes like a nice sound, it makes a nice noise, it's just very nice to use. I've had it for a year and the mouse scroll wheel feels pretty much as good as new, still makes the exact same noise and still feels the exact same as, you know, the first day I bought it pretty much. And what's also pretty cool is that you can also scroll left and right by kind of doing this motion, which is awesome, especially if you work in like an Excel document and you can kind of remap it to do anything else you want as well. Moving on to the next tab here, we have performance. So you can set the DPI to let's say 16,000 if you're a freaking madman. However, I keep mine on 900. You can also enable sensitivity stages. So if you press on this, you'll have five stages, or if you want less than five, you can choose, you know, two, three, four, however many you want, I guess, but up to five. And uh, here are all your stages. So you can set, you know, stage one being 800, 900, 1000, and so on and so forth. And you can go ahead and switch through these various uh, DPI stages here by using the DPI buttons uh, right behind the scroll wheel here. So DPI down is this one and DPI up are these. Uh, over here, we also have the polling rate. You can set this between 125, 500, and 1000. I'm pretty sure this is per second. This is just how many times the mouse will send data back to your PC. And there's no real reason why you shouldn't use 1000. I don't think there's any point using 125, 500. Uh, just set it to 1000 and uh, you'll be good to go as you don't have to worry about battery life. This will always be charged, so don't worry about that. As for the lighting effects, once again, you can have this at a 100% brightness at all times at whatever lighting effect you want as you don't have to worry about the lighting effects affecting battery life you know, as that's not something you have to worry about on this mouse. So brightness, you can turn it off. The LEDs here and here will turn off. Pretty cool stuff. You can turn it back on, they'll go back on. Uh, you can enable switch off lighting when display is off or when the mouse is idle for let's say one minute up to 15 minutes, up to you. Next up, we have the actual effects that you can go over. And uh, as most of you are already familiar with razor effects, you know, you got breathing, uh, you can be random colors, you can be two colors that you choose, you have reactive. So whenever you press any of the buttons on the mouse, the mouse and mouse map will react. And uh, as you can see, pretty much no delay there. It's very, very responsive. Of course, you can set this to whatever color you want and also mess around with the duration of the effect. You can have it short, you can have it long up to you. Moving on, we got Spectrum Cycle. You can also sync any of these effects to any of your other Chroma enabled devices, but by pressing this button here, pretty cool stuff. You know, Spectrum Cycle will, will pretty much cycle through all the colors in the rainbow there, uh, but that's pretty cool stuff. You got static, you know, set this to whatever color you want. It can be white, red, pink, green, orange, up to you, dude. Now there are also the power indicator LEDs. So there's this one here, and then there's that one there on the mouse mat. So what you can do is, ooh, you can turn them off. There we go, now there's no LEDs, no crazy RGB or anything going on, but you know, that is something you can do. You can also enable one and not the other, up to you. You can enable both, you can just have the mouse mat one turned on, up to you, dude. Now, as for the actual LEDs here, they are RGB, as I mentioned earlier. You can set them to whatever color you want. However, they can only be the same color. You can't uh, set individual colors for these guys. They can only be the same color. So I hope that makes sense, but I usually just have mine set to white. It's a pretty neutral color and uh, looks pretty cool, dude. So that's the old power indicator thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and enable the brightness again and pretty much set that to wave because RGB, dude. And moving on, we have uh, this whole thing. Now this is a feature that I kind of don't use. I uh, probably should as it's actually pretty good. You can adjust the liftoff range. Now when you go ahead and actually calibrate uh, a mouse mat, you will enable the whole liftoff range thing. So if you're experiencing tracking issues or something like that, uh, you can increase the liftoff range, you can decrease it. Now all this does, I guess, is if it's set to one, uh, you kind of lift the mouse up and uh, the cursor will kind of not really move around too much unless it's like right on the surface of the mouse mat. And if you set this to 10, uh, you can kind of have the mouse lifted off the mouse mat and it will still kind of track, uh, you know, what's going on here. So I'll mess around with this and find what's comfortable for you. I'm gonna probably have mine set to one and uh, yeah, that's gonna be 
pretty cool. But that's pretty much all the settings uh, on Razer Synapse. You know, you don't really have anything else. You've got calibration, lighting, performance, mess around with all this stuff here, and then customize. You can also, of course, set up different profiles like I have here. We got Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, uh, Audacity, CSGO default, and then this one as well. Another default profile, don't know why that one's there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one as I don't think I want that one there. But um, there we go. Those are all the profiles. And uh, what you can do, which is pretty sick, is if you see that little button right there, there's a little LED there. If you press that button, you'll see on Razer Synapse, uh, there we go, we just switched to Adobe Premiere. If we press it again, we'll go to Adobe Photoshop. Oh, or CSGO, okay then. And then after that, we'll go to Audacity. Then we'll go to Photoshop and back to default. Yeah, see, so that's like a profile switch button that you can mess around with. It's pretty cool if you want to quickly switch between, let's say, you know, your default profile and your Battlefield 5 or CSGO custom mouse profiles. Just press that little button right there and that will switch to, you know, a different profile for you. Another way to switch profiles on Razer Synapse is by pressing on the whole profiles tab. Also, I think Razer Synapse has now crashed. Yes. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, a problem with Razer Synapse is that it's um, pretty buggy and uh, at times drives you mad. But uh, if you go on the Razer Marble Hyperflux mouse here, you can set up profiles to automatically switch to uh, when you access a program. So whenever I open up CSGO, my mouse will automatically switch to my CSGO profile without me having to press any buttons. However, uh, it's, it can be buggy and uh, pretty much crash synapse and the mouse kind of bugs out and stuff. So maybe this is something you shouldn't use, but uh, I feel like for the mouse actually, the custom profile switching works very well. The custom profile switching for the Razer Huntsman Elite, however, is the worst thing I've ever used in my life. It's buggy and drives me mad. However, for the mouse, works great. Uh, actually, well, no problems there as far as I can remember. I've got one set for Audacity, so, so whenever I switch to Audacity, I think my mouse will switch to like a, a yellow color stuff and it will be pretty sick, dude. Uh, if you want to get creative, I guess, with actual uh, lighting effects, well, where is this thing? Studio, they've renamed it to Studio now. All right, so I'm in Razer Chroma Studio now. Now in this bit of software, you can customize things a whole lot more than you can in the Razer like lighting page, I guess, for the for the mouse. So uh, in here, you can customize an individual color for the logo, for the scroll wheel, for each zone on the mouse mat as well. However, at the moment, I think it's completely broken as whenever I press save on anything that I set up here, the mouse mat doesn't change to that color and uh, Razer Chroma Studio crashes. So if you press save, yeah, it, the program will crash and uh, you'll be pretty annoyed. So I'd say avoid using Chroma Studio for now until they fix all the freaking bugs and you know software issues with Razer. But when it does work, you can get very creative and set up you know multiple effects here. So different effect layers here, you got static wave, you have all these here that you can choose from, fire and stuff, you know, all these things that you can select and set up some crazy lighting effects for your mouse and mouse mat. But uh, you know, unfortunately at the moment, I can't really demonstrate anything as like always, the software is broken, especially Razer Chroma Studio, which has been available for so long now and it's still so broken. But I'd still probably rate this mouse and mouse mat combo like maybe like an eight or nine out of 10. I feel like it is still stupidly expensive for a mouse and mouse mat combo, uh, but also bear in mind that I think there's nothing else quite like this. Uh, so that's probably why the price is, you know, a little bit more, well, not a little bit more, a whole lot more than everything else out there on the market. But uh, it is very, very convenient, very, very nice. And um, it's just so good. I love the mouse. And at the moment, I feel like Razer could release a new Razer mouse and I'd be like, meh, I'm, I'm not upgrading to that. But I will probably still cover it on the channel and I might still buy it to make a video about it. But I don't think I'd upgrade to the mouse and use it as like, you know, a daily driver. I feel like this is going to be my daily mouse for the foreseeable future until Razer go ahead and release the Razer Mamba Hyperflux version 2. That is, of course, if they ever go ahead and release, you know, a version 2 of this mouse. But uh, apart from that, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to go learn more about the mouse, I'll leave plenty of links in the video description down below to, uh, I guess, the Razer store, Amazon, probably Newegg, and, you know, whoever else sells it. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go learn more about the mouse, all the links are down below in the description. If you want to go buy it as well, links are down there to Amazon and stuff. But apart from that, guys, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know if you want to see more freaking peripheral reviews on the channel. And if you do, uh, let me know in the comment section down below, dude. Apart from that, though, thank you all so much for watching once again. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.